In this video, we're going to cover how to decorate your games. Click on the Games panel to open up the Game Builder. I'm going to open up a game I've already created that needs decorated. So I'm going to click this game and then I'm going to hit Edit to open it. You can see here that I have a complete game layout. I just need to add the artwork. To decorate my game, I need to be in the Asset tab which is the second tab here. You can see I have already added some assets, but I'm going to need to add more. I use at least one of each block type in my game, so I'm going to need more art here. I'm going to click on an empty slot with a plus icon to open up my library. This will allow me to add art and characters from either my stuff, my class library, or asset packs. I'm going to add art to my asset tab to decorate my power-ups, story blocks, hazards, and anything else that might be left that I don't have covered. Now that we've added all the art that we want, we're ready to start decorating. Since most of my game layout is made of green blocks, I'm going to start with those. I'm going to use this gray dirt texture I made to decorate all of my terrain with. If you click on the block tab, you can see that block's true type. You can see this is green, so I know it's terrain. If you accidentally decorate something, like I did here, you could hit undo, or you could just redecorate it. I'm going to decorate this with the water art that I made. Now I'm going to decorate my hazards. I want to make sure that these look dangerous, so that players will understand that this will hurt them if they touch it. I want to make sure that these orange blocks stand out, so I'm going to make sure that they're decorated differently than the terrain since the hero can interact with them. Since pink, purple, and white blocks are configurable, I'm not done with these just yet. Now I've decorated all 8 block types in my game. It's almost finished, but there's still more work to be done. Before I move on to hero background and music, I'm going to configure my enemies, my story blocks, and my power-ups. I've already configured this enemy in Character Lab, so I don't want to make any changes to these specific ones. I've already planned out a scenario up here where I want the enemy to be giant. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to make those tweaks to this enemy. Make sure you hit save before you close out of the enemy settings if you want to keep your changes. It's looking how I was expecting it, so that's good. I'm going to move on. I want to make these enemies flying. I'm going to go in and change its jump power to flying. I want this last enemy to be the same as the giant enemy I made earlier, so I'm going to use the selection tool. I'm going to select the giant enemy. I'm going to stamp that giant enemy in its original place. I'm going to drag it over here and stamp it into this new spot. Now you'll see I have two copies of the same enemy. Now that I've finished configuring all of my enemies, I'm going to move on to this power-up. I'm going to change this to a recovery power-up that will restore my health if I've taken damage. 
I can set this to up to 9 hearts. I'm just going to max it out. Next I want to configure this story block to be a checkpoint. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to make sure that checkpoint is toggled on with this green check mark here. I can even add a little message for the player. This is my end flag. I'm going to go in and configure it so that this will end my game when I touch it. I'm going to pick an effect that I think will work best for my game. After I have done that, I don't need to configure anything else, so I can move on to changing my hero. I'm going to go down by the test button, where the character is. In this case, it's Milo. I'm going to click on Milo to open up the hero settings. I'm going to click on Milo again, and I'm going to change him to a different character. Everything here looks good, so I'm going to click save. Next to the hero button, you'll see a background button. Click on that to open up the background library. I'm going to change the background to an asset pack background. I'm going to use this one from the pirate asset pack. Next to the background button is the music button. Click on this to open up the music library to change your music track 